Ready? Fuck the jam, pump it up, while your feet are stumping. And the jam is pumping, look ahead, the crowd is jumping. Pump it up a little more, get the party going on the dance floor. See, cause that's where the party's at, and you find out if you do that. Hi, buddy! Hi, CEO! So today we have a very special video. We want to talk about a new Tolkien story that's coming out very soon. Baron and Luthien. Baron and Luthien. Tolkien is like, he's like the Tupac of fantasy literature. <laughs> yeah, because after he dies and he just, that he just keeps coming out with stuff. He wrote so much stuff that he never quite finished and he left this sort of mountain of unpublished works. So what is this story? Uh, Baron and Luthien is a part of the legendarium of this, that is the Silmarillion. A leg legendarium, of course, legendarium. It's yeah. very legendariumous. Baron and Luthien <laughs> is one of the very few uplifting stories in the Silmarillion. Okay. Which is mostly a lot of tragedy and hubris and... Uh, no, Baron and Luthien is an unmitigated good news. Baron and Luthien is a different kind of Tolkien story. Because Tolkien gets sexy, baby. Sexy Tolkien. Sexy Tolkien. I'm a little bit ambivalent <laughs> about that, to be honest. To be honest. <laughs> the story about love and love conquering all. And just, just as so you know how important it was to Tolkien, he had Baron and Luthien engraved on his and his wife's tombstone. Ooh, that's very romantic. It's very sweet. Very sweet. Very sweet. I'm not sure it's sexy, though. But. No, it's definitely not sexy. <laughs> Dying is not sexy. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, unless you're into that kind of stuff. Right. We're not judging. Yeah, not ju necrophilia, yeah. not judging. Yeah. Basically, the love story between Aragorn and Arwen is based on mm -hmm. Baron and Luthien. It is? Yeah, it's the, it's the story of this beautiful elf princess who... Uh, agrees to become mortal for the love of a mortal man. Which, now that I'm saying it, does kind of sound like a woman throwing away all of her identity for the sake of a man, and it's, it's slightly less right. romantic. Right, maybe she should have had like a prenup. If we separate, then I get to be then back I can immortal. Be a, then I can be immortal and live forever. That makes more sense. Yeah. I'm and a lawyer, even yeah. though we're both Jews. <laughs> Uh, Luthien, the elf princess, is she's a real highlight for female token fans, because mm, I mean, because female token fans have been just mm. horribly deprived. I mean, all the heroes are men. It's uh, you know you have Galadriel, who's a great character, and then you have uh, you know Eowyn kills the Witch King is kind of great right. moment. Great that's moment. two chapters out of these giant books, and that's all you get. Uh, Come on, what do you want more? They probably weren't good enough to be in the story. Let me tell you, Merry and Pippin should have been girls. I said it here. Why not? There's nothing... Because then there will be all this weird sexual attraction between the hobbits and that would be very weird. Yeah, that'd be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's raining men. So, Baron sees Luthien and falls in love with her. They are both uh, elves. Ah, oh, Baron, Baron is a Baron man. Baron is a mortal man, and Luthien is the elf princess. Right? Okay. And Baron sees Luthien and falls in love on sight. He's like, that's it. I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> I want that. So, he goes right to Luthien's father. That's like a direct quote from the from the Yeah, book. yeah. He's like, I'm done. You know, he just sees her. Boom. Thunderbolt. Call his father out here and he says, hey, listen, I'm going to marry your daughter. want to marry your daughter. And so the, Luthien's father is this elven king called Thingol, and he, he doesn't think much of Barry. Who is this guy, this mortal? We're immortal. Right. 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 It's, a it's, a, it's a class thing. Class yeah, thing. so he kind yeah. of fucks with him a little bit and he says, all right, you want to marry my daughter, go <laughs> fetch me a Silmaril from the crown of Morgoth. Okay, sounds easy. All right, well... Yeah. Just go fetch it. Right, that's what that's what Baron thinks, right? But that's like the biggest death sentence that you could tell a person. You you know, you basically it's like uh, taking the ring off Sauron's finger, or you know, really? take, yeah, or like taking the gold iPhone out of Trump's hand in a tweet storm. You know, it's a death sentence. You know, one of the main preoccupations with Tolkien's stories is this question of immortality. He has right. immortal characters, and they're thinking characters, and people that right. we can actually get insight into the way 
they, an immortal being looks at the world. Right, because it's very anti-intuitive. How right. could you think about about it? So unless you're immortal. Right, Luthien as an immortal and he's not because he's dead. Uh, the phrase that they elves use uh, for mortality is called the gift of man. There's this there's the mm. sense that that being immortal, um, so you never get to rest in that right. in that by man having the having mortality is a release of there's a release to it somebody's dying yeah. <laughs> i'm not sure if you can hear it there's an ambulance here right. there's like a sorrowness to the elves they're not happy with the fact that they're immortal sadness sadness yeah it's better than sorrowness sorrowness is not a, it's not is that a word no if you think it's a word, <laughs> you can click like. <laughs> you know, the, the gods never had to evolve. They never had to change. They were this one personality and they were the same right. forever. Like, you know, Aphrodite was never going to stop cheating on Hephaestus, right? She was who she right. was. But a mortal has to evolve. A mortal has to, has to change because, right. you know. Change is inevitable. Change is inevitable, right? So you go through different stages of life and you actually mature. Who is this Morgoth fellow? Morgoth, he's like the original evil. He is like, he invented evil in the beginning of creation. He's the fallen angel type figure from Tolkien's. Um, you know, pantheon right. of god angel semi beings. Semi Christian stuff. Yeah, yeah semi Christian yeah. with a little touch of pagans. Uh, <laughs> like Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's Sauron's bigger, badder uh, self. So. Sounds like a swell guy. Uh, well, Baron, Baron kind of tries and, you know, he doesn't get very far in Luthien, kind of, because she really likes him, right? Her, <laughs> she rolls up her sleeves and she just destroys everybody. She. In a good way? In, in, in a good way, man. Uh, in all that, in order to get the ring, in order to be able... In, so, so, in order to get the, the, the thingy-majiggy that Morgoth has? In order, in order to, to get married? Well, in order to support Baron, because, you know, Baron... He needs some support. Yeah, he really needs support. <laughs> there's no way he could do this, right? Really, there's no way. right? All the elf kings who've tried to challenge uh, Morgoth are dead. Um, and you he's know. just some guy. And, and, and this is... He's a dude. He's some dude. So... <laughs> Baron, you know, tried to help him out, and she, but she tells him, you know, we don't have to get this stupid silver. We can right? loop. We can just like <laughs> fuck my father. He's a right. dick. Uh, we can just go and but Baron's like, no, I gave my word. <sighs> yeah, bullshit. So, but she's and, like, but she's like, she's and, right or die. And she's still into him. She said, know. all right, let's go do it. Let's do it. You said you gave your word. I'm with you. She said, I'm with you either way. If you're gonna, okay. if you're gonna go get it, then we'll go get it. You want to do it legit, or we can just get out of here, right? <laughs> You're telling this story in a magnificent way. Thank <laughs> you. Is there some sex in this book? There's a moment. There's a moment. There's a moment. Now, we know our token bad guys. There's nothing sexy about them, right? Nothing Sauron sexual. doesn't have a sexual thought. I'm sexy and I know it. And it really, it doesn't happen almost at all. It, for any Tolkien's characters, uh, it's never that the drive is never right. All the lust in that book is about the ring, right? Right. I'm sexy and I know it. Morgoth has a moment. Morgoth has a moment <laughs> where Morgoth has a moment. Morgoth has a moment, right? This greatest <laughs> evil of all of okay. all time, where you know Luthien, he sees her before him, and he's like, yeah, I like. I like that. <laughs> and he pauses and it ruins everything. It destroys him. He screws him up completely. Because she, he fell because, in love? Yeah, because he had... It, he didn't it fall in love. Warm, it was a moment. And it was... I mean, I should read the quote. Right? <laughs> Upon her beauty, he conceived his thought an evil lust and a design more dark than any that had yet come to his heart. Thus he was beguiled by his own malice, for he watched her, leaving her free for a while and taking secret pleasure in his thought. How you doing? Well, that was Morgoth, because Morgoth, he's an evil being. He can't, he's, he's given up on lust and love, right? So all it, all it is is like right. a weird flicker of, you know, normalcy. Right. That for it's, an evil being is nothing but a problem. You know? Right. It's like a virus in his computer or whatever. Exactly. What the fuck? How can I handle this shit now? I thought it's I had it all figured out. Like he pushed all his emotions down so he won't feel anything. And now... Okay. A stiffy. Okay. So who should read this book? 
Token fans must no, get. No question about it. No question about it. See, see a real token heroine do her thing. If you only read Lord of the Rings. Give this book a try. Okay. Because while it's, it will have an arcane presentation, it will also be a fully fleshed out narrative mm. story. It's, it will be a, a standalone right. novel. So there will be like a momentum to it, a flow to it that was missing in that, Right, that for Silmarillion, which may have overwhelmed you with all the information, mm -hmm. at least this will, you'll know the characters to focus on. So the book is not out yet, March 2017, right? Right. So how do you know all this shit? <laughs> Sorry, that's weird. <laughs> I can see into the future. So how do, you, how do you know what's going on in the book? Because it's a chapter from the Silmarillion. So Christopher took the chapter and turned it into a book? Yeah. Good basically, job, man. Good job. Right. Basically, the uh, <laughs> there's so much unpublished work of tokens that, you know, it's, it's taken Christopher this long to put it together in a publishable form. So when did Tolkien write all this shit? He began when he was first at war in, as, a, as a young man. You know, he's a philologist, right? Which is basically a scholar dealing with uh, languages. archaic languages. Right. And he in invented his own, right? The right. Elvish languages. Right, he was looking for the perfect language. Yeah, right. And well, he, made, he actually invented several. And he, he was like, well, I need a, a world for these languages to exist in, right? Okay. So that's how the Silmarillion began to develop as this, as this legend of historical and mythical um, cycles and stories that would make this language, these right. languages, make sense. Right. I want to use this language. Nobody speaks this language but me. Yeah. So I will speak it. I will give the lines to characters so they can speak this language. So they could speak it and you could understand like why one dialect is different from another because these elves are from right. this place, and these elves are from that place. Right, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And that's why, that's why everything in, Tolkien, in Tolkien's works has several names, right? Like there's, you know... Um, uh, <laughs> he is writing the sequel to The Hobbit while he was deep, deep in the Silmarillion, and so he said, you know what, I'm going, I'm, I'm bringing the hobbits deep into this world, right? And that's how we get the Sauron and the Aragorns right. and all, the, all that story. All the elves and the Mayas and the Luvatars. Right. right. And, These beings all come out of a hole and it becomes a, a piece of an entire world, right? Like over 10 years since we had, a, since we had seen any Tolkien stories or... Uh, right. So, let's wrap it up. If you enjoyed the video, you should definitely click like. If you want to support our channel, go to patreon.com slash GOT Academy. Any pledge would be very, very, very helpful. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm sexy and I know it.